Hi, and welcome to this chess video. We're going to have a look at another game from round one of the Tata Steel Chess Tournament 2019. We're going to stay in the Masters division with all the top players. Uh, first, a quick look at the uh, starting rank. I'm gonna get that up here. We're looking at Anis Kiri, the fourth seed of the tournament, and he's playing against Jan Nepomniachtchi, the seventh seed. And Anis had the white pieces, and he opened with <coughs> e4. And now, uh, a rather big surprise by Nepomniachtchi. He played d6, uh, the perch defense. And, well, probably Giri was expecting something else, such as the Sicilian, but none of that today. So the uh, perch defense, which doesn't appear that often at the highest level, so interesting to see what what happens. D4, knight f6. Uh, we have yeah a normal development here, bishop e3, and now a6, which is a move more often played in the modern. Uh, once the knight is on g8, that's usually classified as a modern. But with a knight on f6, it's classified as a perch defense. So sort of mixing uh, the perch and the uh, and the modern defense. Here we have the uh, move b5. Of course, black is threatening to play b4 and win the pawn, so white plays f3, securing the pawn. Knight b to d7, and long castles. Um, well, with the pieces out here. On the queen side, it makes sense to uh, castle queen side, but perhaps white is re, uh, revealing his hand a little too fast. And black can, in some cases, make use of uh, still having this bishop on f8, not having committed it to a g7. And yeah, before putting the bishop on g7, uh, Nepomniachtchi plays knight b6, and he just wants to strengthen his position on the queen side and in the center. Anish decides to strike on the king side. This sort of setup we see in the Sicilian a lot, uh, sort of the so-called English attack. And sometimes these lines uh, transpose into a Sicilian structure. If black were to play c5, and we would swap these pawns, we would have a Sicilian structure. Here we have the first uh, new move of the game, knight to h3. Most games that have reached this position have featured the move g4 to g5, but Anish went knight h3. Knight h3 nonetheless is uh, is a common idea in these lines. Uh, sometimes it's played after h4, and the reason for putting it on h3 is that black can, and in some cases, put an knight on c4, and you would like your bishop to be able to uh, capture on c4 if this were to happen. So knight h3, Nepomniachtchi uh, plays knight f to d7, sort of pre preventively getting out of uh, preemptively getting out of uh, any attacks with g5 or e5. Also, this strengthens the push c5. She wants to uh, go that route, but all in all, he's just getting ready to uh, to pounce on on the queen side most likely. Bishop to e2, and now e6, and still keeping this bishop on f8. And now, bishop g5, and yeah, afterwards, perhaps this was the start of a wrong plan for, for white here, after bishop e7. Uh, I didn't quite understand the move uh, queen to e3, which was played now by Hagiri. And black is quite happy, actually, to uh, trade off these bishops. Okay, knight comes to, into g5 here, and h6, kicking the knight away, and after knight h3, queen to h4. A nice idea putting the queen on h4 and it's not so easy to uh, to dislodge this queen and it actually stands quite well there it's sort of poking uh, white's king side and also importantly it's preventing white from ever advancing with h4 etc on the king side so first uh, kiri retreated with a knight knight to f2 and now nepomiachi castled queen side Okay, he has you know opened up some pawn cover on the queen side, but uh, white doesn't really have any pieces to to punish this setup, so it's actually quite safe for for black. And here, 
a very committal move by Giri. He goes for f4. And this allows a somewhat thematic break here by by Nepo, and he plays f5, using the fact that this bishop is very strong on this diagonal, and also targeting these pawns, breaking up the uh, the white the big white center, and in many cases, if you get rid of this pawn, uh, whether it takes on f5 or plays e5, you're going to get a really really nice square on d5 here for for black's pieces. So first bishop f3 was played. And now b4. And here, perhaps sensing that the game and the tide was going against him, uh, Giri sort of put all the marbles on the table and went all in here. If he plays a move like, okay, first of all, knight e2 was not a very good move because we can play knight to c4, hitting the queen. And if the queen moves, uh, the knight is hanging on f2. Yeah, emphasizing the, the nice positioning of the queen on h4. And if you take on c4, I uh, simply take another piece. Black is winning. Also, the move knight to b1 will, emph will uh, emphasize what I talked about with the d5 square. F takes e4. If you take with a bishop, your this pawn might hang. If you take with a knight, I can play knight d5. A very nice square for the knight. And after the queen retreats, we will uh, pounce on this pawn. This will not end well for white, and yeah, this sort of led uh, Giri to take the decision to give up a piece here, and he plays e takes on f5. Uh, Nepomia she accepts, he takes on c3, f takes e6, and now a Shushinsuk in between move, c takes b2, check. Of course you can take this pawn, because uh, there's knight c4, check. For Kalicious. <laughs> Come on, man. My drawing skills, okay. Finally, I'm there. But you can't do that. Uh, so, king b1. And now the knight retreats. Knight to f6. Well, it doesn't retreat. It goes forward, but it gets out of the way of the attack. Giri takes on b7. So, the Pominchi is currently up a piece, but what compensation does white have? Unfortunately, not enough. After queen f3, d5. Knight d3. Okay, black did give up this square, but he has a very juicy square on c4 and also on e4. And he pounces on the uh, the e4 square, puts a knight there. Knight c5, check. Now you don't want to take this because, well, you have to move your knight now. And at least then I can take on, on d5 and get some pawns back. But after king a7, uh, yeah, it's much more tricky. If you take on e4 now, I will take on g4 at the end with the queen. Once again, showing how well positioned the queen is on h4. Uh, instead, queen a3, uh, taking a6, but after knight takes c5, uh, queen takes c5, and king b7. Anish Kiri simply resigned the game. He's down a piece, and he just doesn't have enough compensation, and probably... Well discussed with his play, he uh, resigned and Nepo won. So a very good start for Nepo, who starts with a win with the black pieces. And I think he's certainly uh, one of the uh, sort of outsiders to win this tournament. He can definitely do it. A very strong player and it will be fun to see what happens in the next few rounds for Nepo. Yeah, so this is sort of where um, you can hit the uh, subscribe if you haven't, or uh, watch another video if you want. Okay, but okay. Okay, maybe, uh, okay, but uh, maybe you want to, maybe, uh, okay. Okay, but okay.